Most of the creationists that I have included so far in this series simply don't understand the fields of science that they are trying so desperately to destroy. But there are a few young earth creationists who have real PhDs in a relevant branch of science from real universities. Perhaps the most outspoken of such persons today is Jason Lyle, the director of research at the Institute for Creation Research. He has a PhD in astronomy from the University of Colorado and goes around misrepresenting virtually everything about science to make it seem like the evidence points towards a 6,000 year old universe created by God in six literal 24 hour days. A while back he gave a 30 minute talk to some teenagers called Big Problems with the Big Bang Theory. Of the many ridiculous things that he said during that talk, two stand out to me. First, he says that the Big Bang Theory makes no specific correct predictions. But does it make correct predictions? That's our other criterion. Well, it really doesn't. I mean, you, I haven't heard of people saying the Big Bang predicts that if you point your telescope here, you'll see this looking just like that, and it turns out to be true. No, that doesn't happen. Then he says that while the Big Bang Theory predicted the cosmic microwave background, this prediction is as vague as predicting that something will happen tomorrow. Now, people will say, well, the Big Bang predicted the cosmic microwave background. And so this is what I would call a very vague prediction. It's kind of like if I said to you, okay, according to my model, tomorrow, something will happen. I don't say what it is. I just say something's going to happen tomorrow. And then tomorrow, lo and behold, something happens. And I say, see, my model is right. See? That, that would be an example of a vague prediction. And you wouldn't be very impressed, would you? Both of these statements are so far from reality that one cannot help but come to the conclusion that Jason is outright lying. After all, this isn't Kent Hovind or Eric Hovind talking. This is a man with a real PhD in astronomy from a real university. Let's look at his two ridiculous statements in turn. First, the idea that the Big Bang Theory makes no specific and accurate predictions is patently absurd. Besides predicting the existence of the cosmic microwave background, the Big Bang Theory predicts the distribution of galaxies in space, the abundance of hydrogen and helium, that distant events will appear slower than equivalent nearby events, that the properties of galaxies will systematically change with distance from Earth, that the spectra of distant quasars will be different than the spectra of nearby quasars due to neutral hydrogen that existed in the early universe, something called baryon acoustic oscillations, the number of neutrino species, an upper limit on the sum of the masses of the different neutrino species, an upper limit on the neutron half-life, a maximum possible white dwarf age, a maximum possible globular cluster age, and much more. His second claim, that the Big Bang Theory's prediction of the cosmic microwave background is just as amazing as predicting that something will happen tomorrow, is even more dishonest than the first. The cosmic microwave background is not just one prediction but dozens of predictions. This is because the cosmic microwave background, henceforth abbreviated as CMB, has dozens of properties, each of which is predicted by the Big Bang Theory. Since these properties can independently vary, they each count as an independent prediction of the Big Bang Theory. Examples of such predictions include the perfect black body spectrum of the CMB, the fact that half of the sky has a higher CMB temperature than the other half, the existence of CMB temperature variations on all angular scales, the intensity of temperature variations as a function of angular size, called the angular power spectrum of the CMB, the distortion of the CMB spectrum by ionized gas in nearby galaxy clusters, the effect of higher CMB temperatures in the past on the spectrum of distant galaxies, the effect of the CMB on high energy cosmic rays, the polarization of the CMB photons, and much more. In addition, the CMB allows us to predict the values of cosmological parameters such as the age of the universe, Hubble's constant, the curvature of space, the equation of state of dark energy, the sum of the masses of the different types of neutrinos, the number of different types of neutrinos, the primordial abundance of helium, the amplitude of the initial density perturbations, the variation of the amplitude with physical size of the initial density perturbations, and the average density of ordinary matter, dark matter, and dark energy. These cosmological parameters can then be measured independently via various astronomical observations, and the values can then be compared. 
It's very important that we actually understand the previously mentioned evidence for the Big Bang Theory. Thus, I am going to form an extended episode 9, 10, and 11 of the Creationist Attack on Science in which I develop the background scientific principles needed to grasp the basic concepts of the Big Bang Theory and the overwhelming evidence that supports it. Episode 9 will focus on the theoretical structure of the Big Bang Theory. Episode 10 will be about the cosmic microwave background. In episode 11, we will see how we can derive the actual values of the cosmological parameters from the CMB angular power spectrum, how they can be independently measured, and how the results compare to each other. The goal of these episodes is to bring the mountains of evidence for the Big Bang Theory to the general public, so that there will be no doubt that the universe originated in a Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago, and was not created by God in six literal 24-hour days, a mere 6,000 years.